This is Liz from People I Think Are Cool, a bi-weekly podcast where I interview my favorite creatives from across the globe. If you're looking for a dose of creative inspiration, then go to peopleithinkarecool.com or subscribe to People I Think Are Cool on iTunes and Stitcher. You like film, from cult to classic, from blockbuster to B-movies. And there just isn't that one place with all the fan fervor and passion that's covering the kind of mad, diverse brilliance that you love. Well, that's where you're wrong. AfterMovieDiner.com is that fan-built movie nirvana just for you, featuring the sweet, sweet writings of the wife dork herself. AfterMovieDiner.com. Go there. Be the best you can be. You guys look like... What do they look like, Jimmy? Dorks. (laughs) <laughs> they look like a couple of dorks. Get those nerds! 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 They're coming to get you, Barbara. What? Are you kidding? We got us a family here. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? You are listening to the In the Mouth of Dorkness podcast, the official podcast of the Alamo Draft House Winchester. Welcome to another edition of the It Modcast podcast. Joining me is Brian Young. God, I love being a turtle! The turtle door. The night is dark and full of terrors. And also joining us is Lisa Gullickson. Quick, suck it before the venom reaches my heart. The wife dork. That thing has a name. It's Susan. And I'm your host, Darren Smith. Warm. Warmer. Disco. The Disco Dork. Some shit, suffice it to say, just don't wash out. And welcome to another edition of the Yit Modcast podcast. Yay! Yeah. Brad's not here. Brad isn't here, but I'm here. You're here! I'm it's here. been a while yeah. since we've had... It's been a long time. The full compliments, <coughs> the entire It Mod fam yeah. around the table. It's been a while. Yeah, we're, we're still going to have to wait a little bit on that, but... I'm back. Lisa, you did something to your hair? Is your hair shorter? Did you get a haircut? No. I got my eyebrows done. Oh. That's what it is. They are on fleek. Oh, okay. I thought it was highlights. <laughs> no, 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 highlights. no oh, okay. highlights. I like you always get to see me with my like blow dried hair because you see me on Sunday. Uh, okay. yeah, I gotta do my hair for Jesus. It's his day. Yeah. That's right, that's right. It's his day. Yeah. Brian. It's holy week. Did you do something <laughs> to your eyebrows? Um no. I just kinda lotion them up and you know, I try to you lotion mm, your brows? Is that well, like a black person thing? Just my face. Because <laughs> it's all about the brows, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a brow guy. I, I love a nice pair of eyebrows. I actually really do. They're very in right now. Are you I, serious? I, I do. I, I don't know if I told you guys this. Like, that's the one of the reasons I had a crush on Winona Ryder mm-hmm. when I was a kid, because I thought she had the g- most gorgeous eyebrows. I am so <laughs> stoked that, one, this conversation has come up. Two... <laughs> That thick brows are back mm, because okay. in the early 2000s, yeah. it was like the super, like the super fine Gwen Stefani draw it on brow was super mm, in. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I have, I hate to brag, I have a very thick brow, but like, it's not like a lot, there's not like a ton of hairs to work with. The, the, the mm. hairs are just enormous. So I would just have like one brow hair, like just trying to do the work of. Like and it, it was not a good look, but now that the thick brow is back, that's good. People would say in high school, people would stop me in the hallway. They go like, "You look just like your brother, but oh. you have thicker <laughs> eyebrows." <laughs> I'm oh. like, Thank right. you. <laughs> oh, okay. So the Eugene Levy look is back. Yeah, it's okay. it's rolling back, and I love it. I'm All embracing right. it. You know, you know who has thick eyebrows? Uh, Cara Delevingne. Mm-hmm. And and her crazy. eyebrows. She has are like good. Yeah, she does. Caterpillars. Has, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like those naturally arched ones, and she They're has. They're never those. naturally arched. Mm, by yeah, the you're way. probably right. You're probably. Right. They just look that way. I, I just I don't <laughs> like drawn on eyebrows. Yeah. It makes me. Well, sick. they're out. Yeah, that's good. I've known they're Brian out. for almost twenty years, and this whole he has a thing for eyebrows thing is. A revelation to really? me. Really? Yeah, I, we've never oh, talked man. about. I that. can't wait until we're just all hanging out like yeah. dudes, and I can lean over to Brian and go like, <laughs> "Check out the brows on on that tall drink of water." I don't, what the hell? I will wingman your you you for your brow lady. Oh man, like I've never n- known nice that. And we've been out. Like he's never said, "Oh, deep, yo, check her out, look at her eyebrows." <laughs> he's never said that to me. Well, I mean, because it's part of the whole package. You know, it's like there's not one thing that. Stands out. So generally, what he says is, 
man, Darren, check out her package. <laughs> yeah, like it's to, like the, to it's include like, the eyebrows. Yeah, the yeah. eyebrows accentuate the whole face. It brings mm. out the eyes, just like how. I, which I never understood this. Like I always get compliments on my eyelashes, and I never yeah, understood. Yeah, you, you do have a gorgeous. But I'm lash. like, it's it's so minute that I never knew it was a that that was a thing. And Brad, I was like, Brad didn't know that false eyelashes were a thing. Instead, I, instead of, until I yeah. pointed out that every woman you see on television has false eyelashes. No, on. every single one, and you don't know. No CGI. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's just so weird. How I've can you tell? Been, because they're Volume is to the point of, mm. you know, superhuman. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's only so much like a, a mascara can do. Yeah, it's just weird because I, I that's the one thing I get compliments on because I guess women are jealous that I have I like they, long, they don't long mention eyelashes. your broad shoulders. I think that your shoulders mm. would come along. Uh, maybe that's too forward. <laughs> there, no, I, like, I, I, got a nice I, but no, but thank you. But I, I thought they slouched because I haven't been working. But I've gotten back to the gym, so I'm trying. I'm trying to. Get I'm out. just saying, ladies, he's very fit. Brian is a, a, very fit. Thank you. Thank All you. right, Bambi eyelashes. <laughs> how was the rest of your, how was your week in Dork? Um, pretty quiet, but um, I was able to catch uh, Guava Island. Now, for those who don't know about Guava Island, this is the week of Coachella, and I believe Childish Gambino, a.k.a. Donald Glover, or wait, Donald Glover, a.k.a. Childish Gambino, Mm-hmm. Or that I think they can work either, either way. way. Okay, <laughs> um, he's headlining Coachella, I believe, and uh, I believe they released this on Amazon. They said it was going to be free for the first eighteen hours, starting at midnight on Saturday. Um, so I was like, well, if it's going to be free, let me try to catch it. It's only fifty-five minutes, and this is the short film that he shot. Well, he had like a month in between the promotion of uh, Star Wars uh, Solo sto- uh, Solo Story. What was that a movie? Han Solo story? Ha, ha, that Han Solo movie, <laughs> and Solo, uh, Solo, a Star, a, a, Wars, a Star Wars movie. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see how re- memorable that movie was. Mm. Anyway, um, but he had he had a block of time. It was like a month, and so it was directed by Hiro Murai. Uh, who's, oh yeah, who's done a lot of episodes um, Atlanta. from Atlanta? He's done some episodes of Barry. He's a really, really talented director, um, and so he shot this. And he worked with Donald Glover a lot. Written by Stephen Glover, his brother, and starring him and Rihanna, and, so, and um, uh, Sherry's in it. Letitia Wright uh, is in it in, the, in a small role. So it's basically about. Um, Donald Glover plays his character Demi, and Rihanna plays his character Col- uh, uh, Coffee, and they it's like this uh, uh, this small little tropical island that's kind of like in the middle of nowhere, and they kind of tell this story in the beginning where the seven gods kind of created this island as kind of like um, a safe keep because uh, they created these two different factions of like war and um, and love. And on this island, there is this huge mineral that's uh, that's it's like this silk that's created from some of the animals that live on the island. And there's this one guy named Red who's kind of like this dictator who kind of came over and kind of overthrew the island to kind of take over the, these resources of this silk uh, to just kind of you know try to just use it for himself and whatnot. So he has everybody on the island kind of working for him. They're like you know sewing and knitting and making like a lot of these silk fabrics and stuff like that just kind of mining and using the resources so coffee and demi have been kind of like neighbors um since they were kids and they would all and he would always play the guitar and play music and so they kind of grew up together and they kind of you know have had this kind of like this childlike uh a romance and they kind of grow up together to kind of have this romance together and so demi wants to put on this uh, this concert, like this show, and, and <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm coughing. Everybody, I'm we sorry. We don't have cough buttons. I know. You guys should donate. <laughs> we should start a Patreon for cough buttons. I'm getting over a cold, and I still have a little cough in my in my in my throat. So mm-hmm. excuse me if I cough. But um, he wants to create a song that can unite the people of Guava Island. And so he's playing this music, and then uh, there. So there, it all happens in one day. Is it and, a musical? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is you? You'll probably end up liking it a, a, a lot. It's got some. It's got some really good, very uh, like Caribbean type of music in there as well. Like the way that uh, Donald Glover he takes a lot of the songs that he has. Like he does a, a rendition of "This Is America" um, in in, uh, in the actual short film. But I don't know. I found it to be pretty. 
I don't know. I, I thought it was really, really cool. Just I, I love Hiro Murai and his eye and the look of the film. And the story is kind of simplistic and pretty kind of generic, but um, it's pretty much like a straightforward story. But the chemistry between Donald Glover and Rihanna, I think, is, is really palpable on screen. And I think Rihanna is really, really good in, in the story as well. Uh, but just seeing, like, their love story and seeing him, like, create this music and trying to put on this, this song for this festival... Um, it's just really, really cool to see a lot of that stuff. So I, I, I really kind of dug it. And I definitely, if you're a fan of Donald Glover, if you're a fan of Hero Mirai, um, I definitely suggest you guys uh, check it out. And I think it is free. It's still free on Amazon. So it's on Amazon Prime. So I definitely recommend everybody checking that one out. You see Janelle Monae's musical mini movie short film thing kind of it's, it's like oh, that oh no I heard did, was that the one that was with her new album Dirty Computer mm-hmm. I never saw that I wanted you to check it out it's weird as shit yeah but I mean but just from a uh, creative and artistic standpoint I, I feel like it's worth checking out and it's good to see just to see her because most people might not know most people might just know of her name or yeah. her, her one of her songs or yeah. maybe seen her in Moonlight um, but right, yeah, yeah. to see this particular piece of work, it really gives you an insight into her creative mind and her forward thinking and stuff like that. Because it's it's like futuristic sci-fi, uh, but it's also like urban contemporary. Mm. And it, uh, Tessa Thompson is in it, oh, nice. who plays like this plays her love interest or whatever. Like it's yeah. it's really good. You should check it out. It's, right. it's 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 unique. It's unique. I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's something similar to what Donald Glover was trying to do. Um, it sounds like it. Yeah, just taking just a lot of the Caribbean aspects of it and just trying to do something just a little bit more creative and incorporating his music. Uh, just the way he incorporated This Is America was like, because they work at this factory and it's this one guy who's talking about the American dream. And Donald Glover is like, the American dream is basically, it's, I mean, all you, I mean, it's like they create this this idea of you going to America to be an entrepreneur, but ultimately you're still just working in the system to make money for the people that's controlling the system. So you're not really being an entrepreneur. And the way they kind of incorporate some of the, the sounds in the factory – um, with the actual music and the way it, it it was pretty it was pretty cool the way they were able to kind of do that rendition of it so yeah it's kind of similar it's like stuff that Michael Jackson did with either Moon like what's the film? Moonwalker Moonwalker yeah. or Thriller or something like that for her that Dirty Computer she <clears throat> the 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 short is structured around that album so yeah, yeah. It, so it would each musical performance each song would be a music video you could you could take that music video and just put it as a standalone music video for that song mm-hmm. but they all connect through this this futuristic narrative or got whatever you, got you yeah 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 so that's pretty cool so yeah 55 minutes on amazon definitely check it out if you got the time yeah all right uh wife dork how's yes. your week indoor my week in dork has been lovely even with brad out of town as brad was like getting ready to leave, I had like the brilliant idea of starting a Boston Legal rewatch to kind of comfort <laughs> me when he while he was away. Yeah. And then I thought that that was just like such a great idea that I would like start it before he left. And so I just <laughs> like mm. um, as he was, was like walking out the door, bye, honey, I miss you. I'll be like, bye, I'm watching Alan. <laughs> I love Alan Shore, James Spader. Yum, oh yum, yeah, yum. James Spader. Yeah. Oh man. Can he deliver a closing a closing argument? He he went in my heart. He wins every time. Oh wow! Mm, he really awesome. really does. That's awesome. That show has shaped so many of my like political, social opinions. It's like not even right. But yeah. Um, also, with Brad gone, I've kind of like got because Brad and I are like so super tight that it makes me like a terrible friend because I don't want to <laughs> hang out with anybody because I'm like. <clears throat> someone amazing to hang out with right here so i've been like going out hanging out with my girlfriends i went and i had lunch with Lindsay, friend of the podcast who's been oh, yeah, yeah. had ethiopian food for the first time mm. it was delicious he by was the your way. hands yeah, yeah yeah and he like brought over the forks and i was just like shame but it was okay <laughs> and i did do a mix of the two because i think that there is some secret to like the ratio of like having enough bread to cover like the whole because they put the way it was served to me they had like the bread and i I, underneath Mm -hmm. and then the stuff was on top 
But then I peeled away all of the bread and I still had more stuff. Like I did, I, I, the ratio of like, um, scoopy stuff yeah. to bread, I messed it up. And so I had to go Because what's the, the bread place. called? It's like a flat bread, right? Yeah, and you have to I use wish the... I had Googled it before we started talking. Oh, no, no, and I didn't. Because <laughs> I, I remember I shot an Ethiopian wedding and that, they had food like yeah. that where you take the bread and you have to like take it in your hand and that's and how you, you pinch. Pick the, yeah, you have to pick the food up and yeah. that's how you eat it. Yeah, it was interesting. It I, was good. I it mean, was, it yeah. was really good. Yeah. Well, because I like a, I like a, a saucy Mm -hmm. I like my I like yeah. my food in a pile. I'm not a very sophisticated person, <laughs> so that was really good. And then, um, and I've also been feeling like really like inspired. I've been mm. reading um, for our comic book couples counseling podcast right now. Our book is Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. Have you heard of Brene Brown? No. She is a researcher in the subjects of shame and vulnerability, and so her whole thing is. Vulnerability is like something that we admire in others. Mm -hmm. We admire people who take risks and really put themselves out there and, you know, they, you know, have their trials and tribulations, but, you know, they they keep trying and eventually they overcome. We love those kinds of stories, yeah. but they fe we fear them for ourselves. Yeah. So she's like one of those who really encourages you to put yourself out there, take a risk, you know. Like, if you're not going to fail, like, if you're too afraid to fail to do anything, all you're going to do is do nothing. And you'll, your life will just be static. You'll, yeah. the, the choice against vulnerability is the choice against you becoming the person that you want to be. Hmm. Is the idea of it. So any self-preservational um, choice you're making yeah. is a choice for you to take a step back from whatever your next goal is. And she, she's an author of a book? What? Yeah, she she's an off, author of several books. The one we're reading for the podcast is Daring Greatly, but she did an amazing okay. TED Talk on vulnerability, which okay. is super digestible, and, and really, I found it super inspirational. And then I went to Lisa Bell Roden's uh, yeah. home, and she has the Master Class series. Oh. And so while we were getting ready to go see Missing Link, um, we watched the Neil Gaiman masterclass mm. about uh, his his series is about storytelling, mm -hmm. and I'm like now I wanna now I wanna write a thing, so I'm feeling like super motivated. But what I really want to talk about <laughs> is Missing Link. I was super excited to see this movie just because um, not just because because I love Leica. Paranorman is my all time favorite Leica movie. So dark and weird. Yeah. They're always. They're they're never talking down and making like a child movie. They really make movies that have a lot to say. They're really big picture movies. Yeah. And um, Brad also got to go to like a studios yep. and yeah. get his pictures with the sets and yep. talk to all of those amazing craftsmen who put together these movies. And so and he got to see it early because of all of his press credentials and whatever so i was i was happy to finally see this movie and i gotta say i really enjoyed it yeah um i really loved um missing link or 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 susan <laughs> as he becomes called i really like him as a character he is the last of his kind and he just wants to find where he fits in the world and he is voice acted by Zach Galifianakis, oh, yeah. who is one of those, he, like, he's got the comedian's insight. He understands, you know, what's going to get a reaction, how a mind works. So I think it makes him a very intuitive voice actor. He's just so expressive. Yeah, I, I felt that way, with, and even as the Joker in the Batman Lego movie. Yeah. He was able to kind of bring some, some of that to that role as well, so. I think he, it's that vulnerability yeah. thing. He brings some, he brings real realness yeah. to this kind of ridiculous character, this, mm. you know, big, mm -hmm. huge, furry monster <laughs> character. And then, of course, opposite Hugh Jackman. That's right. Like, Hugh Jackman is like the adventurer who is, um, ambitious he wants the other explorers to appreciate him for all of the things he's discovered and he just can't get into the guys club yeah. for one reason or another okay. um i it is a like a journey movie where they 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 start in the united states and they want to get um the 
I can't, I forget the American word for Yeti all of a sudden. Um, Sasquatch. Oh, okay. Sasquatch. Okay. I, was, I was gonna say Bigfoot. Oh, that's a good one too. <laughs> it's also that. Um, so they they're taking him out of you know the United States and taking him over to I don't know where the Yetis are. Was uh, it the in, Himalayas? India. Okay. Yeah, they take him to the Himalayas okay. and um, to reunite him with his people. Mm. And so there is like a journey element, and for some reason I find quests a little soporific. So I did, like, I fell asleep as they were getting on a boat, and then I woke up, like, as they arrived at their destination. <laughs> so uh, that after the movie, I did have to turn to Lisa and go, like, and why are they calling him Susan? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to go back and see it <laughs> again. But from what I saw, from the donut that I saw, the two outside fluffy parts... I, I thought it was really good. What what I'm interested to know is what Sia thinks of it. Mm. And the reason is this. Um, Lisa made the point of, like, are children going to identify with Sir Lionel Frost, the Hugh Jackman character, because he has this sense of rejection and he's he has a misguided ambition? Like, is a child going to be identified? able to identify with that character or is a child going to be able to identify with the Sasquatch character because he has this, everybody has a sense of feeling like I'm the only one of mm -hmm. my kind and how am mm -hmm. I going to, so maybe, but may like, cause this is the first, like a movie that doesn't have a child mm. oh, as the oh, center of oh, the yeah, film. That, yeah, you're right. And we did have a family sitting to the right of us where I felt they brought a child who was like, I would say on the bubble of too young mm, okay. for any movie. I don't know. I don't know when. Uh, to me, I'm like, uh, under 12, get out of here. <laughs> Unless you can sit down and be quiet through an entire movie. But um, the kid kind of lost interest, I would say, a third of the way into the movie. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I would say halfway through the movie. Like, they did the check drop at, you know, 45 minutes, and they just paid the check, and they just left. Like the I was a five and a six-year-old in my screening, in my second screening of Hellboy today. Whoa! I bet you children would love that Hellboy movie, though. Really? Uh, was it scary? Well, the end of it, when when hell opens and those creatures are coming and people are getting ripped in half. They were scary. Yeah, maybe... Like, for a five-year-old? Like, that's freaking nuts. What did the five-year-old do? Oh, I don't They were sitting in some other part of the theater. I just was, when I was going in, and I was thinking, oh man, they're walking into the wrong theater. No, they, <laughs> they, they were going to see Hellboy. Because like, if that was five-year-old Lisa, like, yes, tears and screaming, and yeah. why does he have a butthole for a head? Whoa. Um, it's spoilers. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but then, like, like, I imagine five-year-old Brad would be like two thumbs up. Five-year-old Brad, the, yeah. the one that lives inside the 35-year-old yeah. Brad? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> loves this movie. Nobody saw that coming. Yeah. We actually decided as a team yeah. to spare, to plus Brian didn't see the movie. I haven't seen it yet. I'm sorry. So we're <laughs> saving the Hellboy review cast for next week. Hmm. But uh, just so as you know, so you guys can emotionally prepare yourself. Um, on the uh, on our fistful last week, I was like, I don't want to see Hellboy with Brad because Brad's going to be like, it's not like the comic. And he's uh. just going to be like, complaining and comparing and pouting the whole time. Yeah. So I was very happy to see Hellboy by myself. But then it turns out Brad loved the movie. Yeah. So yeah. I don't That's know if That's the biggest WTF to me. <laughs> to me I like I like to me it's like now you're just being a contrarian cuz <laughs> I loved the movie, but I liked the first two Hellboy movies. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, yeah. I would say that this one is way more fun like than the Del Toro ones. Okay. Um and but I still really, I mean, okay. I liked him up. But, like, Brad's main complaint was, like, this is not my Hellboy. My Hellboy is serious, and my Hellboy is not a big drinker, and yeah. they've just leaned too hard into smoking cigars and blah, blah, blah. But this one, like, he's swearing. He's drinking even more, I would argue. And um, and Brad's like, yeah, two thumbs up, two big Brad thumbs up. I'm so mm. intrigued to see this now. It's... <sighs> Really, it's it's a great time of the movies. Okay, Darren was like, "How did you sit through that movie? It is so vomity." And um, Brad did explain to me, "Yeah, this girl, the chick from American Honey, oh, American yeah, yeah. Honey, 
she does have like spirits that come out oh, of her mouth. Okay. So I was imagining, cause I was imagining like ghosty. Oh yeah, yeah. Kind it's of like way more slimy than oh, I anticipated. More Ghostbuster style. Yeah, really. Okay. Like there was something intestinal about the way that it, like the way the the spirit met the mouth in mm. a way that it was really gross. And then it would be slurped like a lady in the tramp. And a piece of spaghetti oh. be slurped back into her face in a oh. way that was upsetting. Yeah. Um, but wait, you saw it? You yeah. looked at that part? I, I mean, I did because I was like, I'm. What's weird is like when I would look at the actual spirit, and, and I couldn't see it attached to her mouth. Didn't really bother fine, me. Yeah. But the exit and entrance was was nasty. And yeah. then there was a couple of like blood splatter from mouths that was pretty gross, but. Like, emetophobia wise, it, it wasn't that bad. Because hmm. when that when I first saw that, I was like, oh, well, Lisa's, Lisa's not, not watching like this movie. The, the, like, to me, the most disturbing part was, like, it being slurped back in, and there was mm. just, like, she would just kind of spit. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And then there was, the like, the whole plague situation. I don't know what happened there, because I did, when she was, like, shooting, like, she shoots, like, um, little Locus Resident Evil. Whatever. Yeah, she shoots little bees out of her hands and the bees make people sick so I closed my eyes for that part so I have no idea if there was any bee in that but no, Brad said that there wasn't no. and you said that there wasn't I don't no. know why I didn't trust it was just him. the Sasha Lane stuff and now yeah it was so gross you, you and Brad both surprised me with this movie because I was like <laughs> Lisa's not gonna see look at that and then Brad's not gonna love that Brad loves it and you looked at that like that's I did. nuts to me I what looked... is wrong? who are you people <laughs> uh, and there was like the one part where um, a hot guy from Lost like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, David. Uh, oh god, what's super, his name? Super. Like, give that guy an accent, and I don't think there's anyone sexier. Yeah. Like, just hands down, just straight up appeal. Who's hot guy from the the, the, the leopard uh, dude? The yeah, a, the Asian oh. guy. What's oh? Da, da, handsome, handsome. Damn you, damn you. Was his name in the movie? I think Damio. Or something um, like it's that. the actor's name. But I, I don't know his name because I have it right here. I, mean, I have the IMDb. It was originally supposed to be played by Ed Screen, but he uh, he oh yeah uh, yeah he. Uh, he declined the role because he wanted an Asian actor to be in it. Mm -hmm. Daniel Day Kim. Yes. That's him. Daniel Day Kim. Yes. Okay. There's one transformation scene where he kind of, like, his, I guess his, where there's, like, splurt. Mm. Oh, yeah. Where there's, yeah. like, blood splurt. Okay. Oh, when he turns into the, uh, oh, yeah. Am I spoiling it, Brian? Do you know? I, I guess I mean, this I've, is I've a seen, I've seen him morph into like oh. some type of werewolf. Or oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I yeah. guess that, uh, yeah. But yeah, that was a leopard. Leopard. we're that was not going to review oh, it. Okay. Okay. We'll review it next week. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure to watch so, it. So, yeah, Brian, highly recommend. Did you yeah. like it? You've been oddly quiet. I saw his letterbox score. So I, I, I'll, 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 I'll say I'll <laughs> save my discussion for the review cast. Uh, yeah. I, didn't, I, I saw it twice. Today, yeah. I, I just, I just came I'm going to see it again. So. I'm excited to see it again because now I will see it with Brad now that I know. I had to go back and like see it, it to, to go, okay, did I miss something? Maybe I missed something because <laughs> Brad missed gave, because I saw Brad's letterbox go and I was like, four stars? I, I saw that he, on Facebook, that he posted that he liked it. So I was thinking like three stars or, or whatever. But then I saw the letterbox score was like four stars. I was like, oh my gosh. I gotta go back and rewatch it. Maybe me, I watched it the wrong way. He also <laughs> went into the movie like super skeptical because mm. that whole like tomato yeah. meter yeah. tweet came out where it was like nine percent. I know. I was and, me and Darren were talking about that, yeah. And so I think that he's just doing his part to like tip the scales mm. because I don't like even if like you come out of the movie not loving it, I think it's it, I like I feel sorry for you if you skip it because it. It's I mean, definitely stuff in there to enjoy, a definitely. unique mm. experience, okay. and I, I for one liked it. Okay. But it's a lot of stuff Brad likes. There's our Arthurian legend in there. There's ooh Arthurian legend. There's mm -hmm. um okay. lots of lots of blood and violence like a and lot. guts. That movie's gorgeous. <laughs> Way more intestines oh, than Brian I. Oh Brian and the Baba Yaga. Oh you know man, Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga. Bruh, <laughs> she's in there and she's oh, horrifying. It's a great. It's a great character design. It is great insane. Great character design. Okay. Um, I'll check it the out. way she flips and moves around, and she Horrifying. has cloven fingernails. Is there anything? Is that the Mila Jovovich character? No. Oh, oh there's some something else. Okay. She okay. she should have been like the main dude. Wait till yeah. That <laughs> sequence, like I'm, that is a sequence that won Brad over. Yeah. But okay. like, if we're thinking good, bad, ugly, that kiss. 
Oh, did you? How did you watch that? Oh my god. Mm, mm. No. I, think I'm, I think I'm having more thing. fun listening to y'all talk to about it. <laughs> no, uh, thank you. Mm. <laughs> Just take my like, eyeball. Like, <laughs> like there's like a tra- like a snail trail of Baba Yaga tongue. It's, it's real nightmare fuel. Okay. Mm. But her eyebrows on fleek. Oh. You might dig her. Okay. You might dig her. Hey. I don't remember her brows. <laughs> All right, that's it for your weekend dork, Lisa? Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, for my weekend dork, I'm not going to linger on any one of these things too long. I'm just going to talk about some shit that I've seen since I haven't been here in like four weeks. Uh, I caught, uh, and I want to say this screen, this screened at the Lost Weekend, uh, Vigilante. Did that screen at Lost Weekend? It, I, 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 it, it did. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't see it, but I it, also it did. did not see yeah. it. So I, I, uh, I knew that they were screening at Lost Weekend, but because I wasn't there, I did want to feel at least some connection to Lost Weekend. So I did catch it on uh it is available it was available on itunes mm-hmm. so i watched it and it is um the sarah dagger nixon directed film starring olivia wilde um basically olivia wilde is a she's a particular vigilante she's a, a a woman who through um coded means is made aware of women who are in um, domestic abuse situations, and mm. she goes and basically frees them of those situations. So she will go and basically beat the shit out of the perpetrator and say, if you see this woman again, if you call her, if you do blah, 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 I will find you and I will kill you. But mm. she would beat these motherfuckers within an inch of their lives, right? So um, the, movie, the movie starts out with basically you just we're dropped into she's already living this particular lifestyle and intercut between different scenes of her meeting new people or I don't want to say new clients because she doesn't really charge them well she only charges them what they can what they can pay and A sliding she, scale that's very generous only because she drops her life she ever she drops everything she's doing with her life her job and everything and this is she solely devotes her life to this and so she doesn't have a home, so she goes from hotel to hotel. So mm-hmm. she's only, you know, whatever you can give me, and I'm just going to use that to stay the night so I can help the next person and, and buy gas so I can drive to the next place. Mm-hmm. So that that is the only reason why she accepts payment. There's a moment in there where she says, she tells someone that, that um, the only reason why I'm, I, and I'm accepting payment is because of that. And she eventually, you know, wants to get to the point where she doesn't have to do that. But intercut between these different people that she meet um she meets there is this um there are scenes of it's sort of like a flashback of her in a a support group and when we're in the present time when she's doing her vigilante thing she definitely has um she's definitely wearing it on her you can see you can tell like she's living a particular a, a, a very rough and dangerous lifestyle whether her hands be her knuckles be bruised and busted um she's constantly dyeing her hair um she's applying her own makeup to make herself look a lot older uh to get into the home and, and present as a, an insurance person a salesperson or someone other than who she is and then once she's in that home you know, she reveals her true self and her true nature and reason for being there. She um, imposes the threat after the beatdown. And then, you know, she tells the, tells the guy to leave, put all your money in in her bank account, let you ever contact her again. And she basically helps the the, the women, you know, you know, go forward from there. And so, but they were, you know, you'll have a scene like that. And then you would have a, a short, small scene with her and a support group. And basically, initially you're only getting stories and testimonies from everyone else in the support group you can see she's very withdrawn she's resistant to it initially she's not opening up and it isn't until you know obviously the the end of the film where she decides to open up and tell her story and then you find out why Mm -hmm. she is doing what she's doing and then from that point on the rest of the movie is stays in the present and we move forward you know with her story so it's like two different timelines kind of like memento a little bit Yes, instead, but it, unlike Memento, both timelines are moving forward. forward. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, and so, but you know, I thought, I thought it was a, I thought it was a good film. At, at, at the very least, I've, I appreciate seeing Olivia Wilde in a role like this. Yeah. Um, 
you know, because of the nature of the the story and what it's about, it is it is rough. There are scenes of violence, um, but I want to say a majority, ninety percent of the scenes of violence are all towards men from her. Like mm-hmm. on her, she's dishing out the ass whooping. There's, I think, I think really, I think really the only scene of violence towards a female is her. Like when they show, do they, it's not, yeah, I want to say it's her. So, oh, oh no, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most of the violence that's directed towards a woman is her in, 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 in her situation and, in, in yeah, but I don't want to spoil it. But I, I, I will say that, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very strong performance from her. Um, the physicality inherent in that role, I feel like she pulls it off because a lot of the scenes earlier on is her in her hotel room or wherever she was, you know, training herself. You see her reading books. You see her practicing self-defense techniques. You see her... Hardening, hardening her fists, um, you know, just yeah. pre- you know, preparing herself or, or providing uh, the upkeep of living this particular type of lifestyle. And then when she goes out and she has these encounters with these men, there's, there's a scene where she's in a bar and she's harassed and followed into the parking lot, and she's taken by these four men. And immediately that scene goes left for those guys mm-hmm. and. She puts it, she abruptly ends that shit, and so I don't know. I I found it. Um, I'm just not used to seeing a a, a protagonist like that, mm-hmm. and I appreciated it. And it's really cool, like scrolling down the IMDb and just seeing a cast that is overwhelmingly women. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, and um, is that directed by a woman? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Um, it's worth checking out. Uh, it it is it is streaming on on demand right now. Um. It, you can re, you have to rent it. Um, at some point, it will probably be on Netflix or Amazon Prime. But I will say it's worth checking out, ex- especially with and I don't know, like th- this particular role coupled with uh, her upcoming yeah. directorial debut, debut, yeah, book smart, book smart. Um, I don't know. I I, I really like uh, her career path. I like she's making some good creative choices. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, I like the diversity in that. So, I would highly recommend checking that out. Um, I did get to see Shazam. I really enjoyed Shazam. Shazam? Gonna... Yes, I also enjoyed <laughs> Shazam. Have we not? Oh yeah, because you guys weren't here. I wasn't here for that. Oh, um, yeah, but I, I, I dug Shazam. Um, I also saw Pet Cemetery. I went on a date and saw that. <laughs> <laughs> did um, you hold her hand because it was scary? It was she hold, scary. She held me. She was yeah. She scares easily, which I enjoy. It's, it's <laughs> funny. Um, yeah, that movie. I at least you asked me if I had seen the original. I, if I did, I don't remember it. And I remember asking my dad because he saw it, the original. And I remember asking him how the the original ended because I didn't remember like the ending to this movie was freaking bleak. Mm. <laughs> um, but I appreciated it. I I, I don't know. It kind of caught me off guard. So maybe I didn't see the original. But yeah, um, I like. Um, I felt there were a lot of like jump scares in there uh, with yeah. the, with the audio by design, but but I mean for the most part, like I, I love uh, John Lithgow's character. Uh, Jason Clark was was good in it. Um, uh, the the lady from Upstream Color, the mom, Amy Simmons. Amy Simmons, yeah, like uh, Simmons. yeah, she was she was good in it, and the the freaking cat. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. Church, the, Church, or the cats that play. Apparently, there's like four cats that play. Apparently, that like cats can only learn like a trick like there's a this is the cat that jumps off tables and this mm. is the cat that walks left to right and this is the truck the cat that will you know stand in front of a truck is that really why there was yeah four different churches? Huh. because cats can only do like one trick yeah. they're not like dogs hmm hmm all right well i learned something new today uh and i saw master z i saw that yesterday it my legacy that also uh screened at lost weekend and um Story wise, the movie was uh, was fine, was okay, but like the action in it, the martial arts, oh my god, that shit was amazing. And Dave Bautista mm-hmm. yeah, that, that, was really uh, good in that movie. Yeah. So with the Itmon films, at the very least, with the second and third one, uh, there are, and, and you know what, and, and a lot of these these film, these Hong Kong action films, they'll have an American actor in there. 
and like at the very least, if not the dubbing, for whatever reason, they'll dub the American actors' voice. But even even if they don't, like the acting from the American actors are all it's always like like cringy. Yeah. Right? So in Itmon Master Z, I'm referring to like the 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 constable guy, the the the, the, the officer, the corrupted police right, officer. Right. Right. Um, but also I'm referring to the Dave Batista character because in uh, Itmon Three. Donnie Yen squared off against Mike Tyson. And in the second Itmon, there was a um there was a, a European boxer guy, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was the main uh antagonist at the end of the film. And But like Mike Tyson not doing a good job at acting. Like that's but, but I've seen like it's not like we haven't seen Dave Bautista do some really solid acting. Well, but but that's the thing, like with Mike Tyson, he's he's great. He's good oh, really? in Itmon three. Uh, acting wise, I mean, he's not, you know, blowing. He's not earning any Oscar noms or but anything. But you're not like that. cringing your way through. No, it. no, no. I'm not cringing my way through. And then, but most importantly, like the fight scene between he and Donnie Yen was excellent. And so when I saw Dave Bautista cast it in Master Z, I was like, okay, are they are they kind of you know following a pattern? Is this what they're going to do? And I was curious to see how that character would play, but. He, I think he totally sells that character, and I'm I'm paying attention to um, if you I don't know it it might be a stretch to say the nuance in Dave Bautista's performance, but when I'm watching him, I don't see Drax, I don't mm-hmm. see the character he played in Bushwhack, which is a VOD mm-hmm. movie. Which, like I I don't know, like I I, I can t- I can tell he is that you can I can tell that I can see the experience of working on so many films and these Guardians films and working with these other strong actors. I can see him using that to to um putting that to good use. I, don't know. I feel I feel like there was still like a layer like I feel like there was still like a layer of artifice on his character. Like it wasn't I, I felt like he wasn't completely settled into Really? Yeah. Well maybe I'm comparing his performance because he's an American actor to the other European guy in the film. And right. by leaps and bounds like <laughs> The, just his line delivery alone yeah. is was 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 miles ahead of any other European actor that's been in any of those Itmon films. So maybe that's what I'm. I was I was biased to that. But the, even but then the action scene between he and uh, Max Yang at the end was, you know, this is the type of action that I wanted. This is the type of fight scenes and the quality of fight scenes that I wanted from uh, Triple Threat that we saw earlier mm-hmm. in the month that we didn't get. Um, but Max Yang, he's he's freaking amazing, man. He is such a great martial artist. And um, I don't know, like, you, I I appreciate seeing Wu Ping back behind the camera, but the thing about Wu Ping that I I'm I'm kind of not it's the wire work. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's that's what me and Brad because we saw it the last weekend, and he I know he turned to me and he said, "Are they doing something to the frame rate?" Because yeah, there's a there's, scene in like the where they're jumping from they're signs jumping. to signs. That was oh, the one. Yeah, yeah. So they yeah. would speed up the frame rate to assist in the speed of the movement because they had the guys on wires. So yeah. that I, but I feel like it's been done like that kind of thing has been done better. It, yeah. it felt like a yeah. weird stylistic choice. Yeah. It felt mm-hmm. intentional but off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my my when Wu Ping is behind the camera, I prefer his choreography when his actors are on the ground. Like everything with Michelle Yeoh when she's doing hand to hand and she's fighting Max Zane with the swords. That yeah, whole yeah. scene in that office, yeah, yeah. all of that stuff was phenomenal. Yeah. Like so, I, I I prefer a more grounded Wu Ping, but I. I do understand and, and respect his decision because I get, and I was thinking about this while I was watching it and while I was having a disdain for the wire work. I was thinking about his career and how long he mm-hmm. has been directing martial arts films. I mean, you got to think back to like the 60s, maybe mm-hmm. before that. Yeah. And so for him to be doing it so long, and, and even back then when he started out, he wasn't doing wire work stuff. It was just your standard kung fu, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. kicks and punches and things like that. So I can understand with him having decades of that particular type of filmmaking under his belt, him saying, well, I want to spend these next couple of years, yeah, this next decade it. or so doing something different. And so that I respect. It's yeah. just not my bag. Yeah, um, yeah. But especially because Max Yang is, actually everyone involved are competent martial artists that you don't have to put on wires to have them do exactly. some amazing shit. I love seeing Tony Ja in there as this weird like yeah, that was assassin cool. Green Hornet Kato dude who was just in and out of the movie. Um, the old guy from, actually two people from Kung Fu Hustle were in that movie. The old guy in the beginning who Tony Ja worked for, he was the husband the that was getting slapped around by the, the landlord oh, lady's okay. wife. And then the the brother who owned the, the golden, who owned the, the, the bar, 
he was the coolie uh, from Kung Fu oh, Hustle. Okay. They got his head cut off by yeah. the by the magical um, instrument players. But anyway, yeah, so that was my weekend, Dork. Uh, I also caught Hellboy, like I said, twice. Um, and we will review he that. He is withholding his disdain. Not just... I'll t- you know, it... It has, it's it, it. It comes down to this: the special effects and I knew that that was going to bug the you. Dialogue, but everything else, oh. the, the, the 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 highest hurdle for me, the highest bar was cleared, and that was David. Me buying David Harbor as Hellboy, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, I I love it. I, yeah. I, he's 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 cool with me. I have no problems. It didn't take me out of the movie. I wasn't by the end of it. I wasn't wishing for Ron Perlman. I was. I was totally sold with his Hellboy. Um, and that was the biggest thing that even before seeing the movie when, and seeing the trailer, I was like, man, I, I'm hope, I hope I'm going to be okay. I hope I'm going to be able to buy into him and look past the casting and just, and just see a Hellboy. And that was my biggest concern. And, you know, my, my fears were squash. So, um, yeah. You know, like the Vigilante movie? I mm. feel like I could do that, but like for like dog sitting. Wait, what? Like, I could go, I could, like, if Brad, for some reason, just, you know, if he went off this mortal coil or just or left me cruelly, that I would sell all of my things, and mm. I would just go from house to house, and you wouldn't have to pay me, but I would just st- pet sit your dog. Oh, I thought she meant, like, you would avenge people who abuse dogs. <laughs> oh, I think, I could, like, you'll be a vigilante for I abused I dogs. I don't want to do anything <laughs> that where I have to toughen up my knuckles. Oh, like, I okay. like to keep... My neck soft. They I like a blunt gentle instruments nut. for that, Lisa. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, if I've got a blunt <laughs> instrument, I guess I could do okay. anything. Okay. Okay. So you're saying just be like Olivia Wilde, but instead but, of but but I would dog watch sitting. your do- I would watch your dog or okay. A cat. Okay, but not avenging dogs. No. Okay. No. Dogs need avenging too. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's a I, different. Somebody movie. else can do that, but <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'll stay in your house and watch your dog right. while you're away. All right, uh, fuck, Brian. <laughs> um, I mean, that's why I thought she was going with it. I thought you were. I thought it, so I was like, oh, that's, and he was that's... giving me a very sincere go ahead. Yeah, right? I was I like, oh, that's, that, that like, sounds amazing. Like, that's badass. Yeah, that's, I like that. <laughs> All right, well, maybe you should try that, Brian. Yeah. I, I, no. He's I mean, finally I'm got not, his okay apartment. For, it's like, okay for Lisa he, to do it. He I'm just not, got his posters up. He's not going to move out and sell everything. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not a fighter. I can't. You know, <laughs> oh, okay. I, just, I don't know. I like, I like he it. likes to keep his knucks soft too. He yeah. like his brows arched and his knucks super soft. Exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> Very soft hands. Yes, you do. He moisturizes everything. His knucks, his brows. His brows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Parker. <laughs> what are you looking forward to this week? Is this dry in the movie yeah. theaters yeah. This, this week, man? Yeah, this upcoming week, there's nothing coming out. So I mean, looking forward to after you guys talking about Hellboy, I'm I'm sold. I'm, I think I want to check it out. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it coming out, but I definitely want to go see the this movie, so I'll, I'll definitely check that out. There's a couple of stuff I missed. I still want to see that movie Little. I didn't get a chance to see that. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to go see yeah, that. Yeah, I, w- I was going to, but I decided not to go to the movies. Um, but I, I love Issa Rae, and of course, uh, Marseille Martin, I think that's her name, from Blackish, uh, mm-hmm. is a little girl. So um, I've heard mixed things about it, but I may try to check it out. But yeah, it's, it's a dry weekend, so you know, may see what's on Netflix. See what's, see what's streaming. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you can follow that guy at the Turtle Dork on Twitter, at the Turtle Dork One on Instagram, and at Brian William Young on Facebook. Wife Dork, what are you looking forward to this week? Comedy stuff? Podcast stuff? I don't know what's coming out. Um, I'm looking forward to Endgame. That's in like our near future. Yeah. That's really exciting. Lisa, that's like, oh, like two, two weeks, weeks away? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. This time <coughs> in two weeks later, we'll, we'll be well, living it. in a post Endgame world. We have seen it at least three times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna continue uh, uh, rewatching Boston, Boston Legal. Legal. Mm, yeah. Um, Where are you at? What happened to Gilmore Girls? Did you did, did oh, I already make you finish that? Of course. It's it's summer now. I'm on to damn. I, uh, yeah. Were I, you doing a Buffy rewatch? No, because they're not streaming Buffy and oh. like you my don't own DVD. That? Oh yeah, I, I do. But they're like way in the back of the like TV DVD oh, closet. Okay. okay. Um and. After Movie Diner is gearing up for like a month of Spader, I don't know if that's, I don't know. That might be a, like a, what is it called? A, a secret. <laughs> I can't, like um an exclusive. Oh. I might have just oh, broke some news. Oh. But they're getting ready for like, they're doing a, a Spader May and it's just gotten me in the mood for a smile. Is that, was that your idea? 
Oh, it does sound like my idea. Yeah. No. What? Me and John Cross are of one mind. Huh. We find James Spader super dreamy, and huh. he deserves a month. All right. Yeah. Okay. So. You can follow that lovely young lady at Sidewalk Siren and at Bake Dork on Twitter and Instagram. She is also at Sidewalk Siren on Letterboxd. Brad Gullickson, you can follow him at Mouth Dork on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Letterboxd, and Untapped. And also check out the It Mod uh, podcast. Chatcast. Chatcast. And also Billy Dash at WB Dash. Uh, they're a Chattanooga Film they're Festival. They're a Chattanooga Film Festival. We didn't even uh, spoil Like, Brad has told me all of his cool stories already about... Crispin Glover taking up four hours of his life <laughs> on his like train of madness. I didn't spoil all of those great stories he's going to get to tell in the podcast, so he should be very grateful. So if you're following us on social media, he should be posting. But uh, Crispin my... Glover is going to be on this podcast. I don't even want to think about that right now. Cause I hear it's nuts. I need all they my mental They talked to him faculty. for like an hour. That's crazy. And it was all madness. Wow. That is crazy. That's crazy. Isn't that weird? That's yeah. crazy. George McFly? Mm-hmm. What the hell, man? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Upright George McFly, not upside down George McFly. Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> right. um, and I am Darren Smith, the disco. Oh, what am I looking forward to this week? Um, Nothing, because nothing's coming out in the movie theaters. And so maybe I'll try to go rewatch uh, shit what? No, no, I was going to say... Um, you had your turn. Episode two of Game of Thrones. Dear Lord, on Sunday. Yeah, so as tonight is the season premiere of the final season. So next week, I guess I am looking forward to yeah. episode two of the final season of Game of Thrones. So yeah. there's that. So, But that's way... That's like a week from now. I don't even have anything to do with Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Well, I typically you like to be in a movie theater. Alamo Ashburn Film Club. They're doing some Like It Hot classic, Marilyn Monroe. On what day? Wednesday. You could bring a lady to that. You, you know bring what? a girl to that. Show her a black and white I, comedy. I've never seen that. Is that the one when she, the, the, her dress blows up? I don't oh, is know. Or is that the seven-year itch? That's a Marilyn Monroe movie, right? Yeah, like yeah. Hot. So, okay. But it's the one where uh, two two um, gentlemen want to ride on a train. I can't remember the details. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, I've seen it. Brad hasn't. Is it good? Oh, all I right. I just gave Lisa, a little shrug. You got to sell it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, saying. Okay. I, you know what? I appreciate your honesty. Come bring That is it's why a I love you. Film. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, you can find me at the Disco Dork on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Letterboxd. Brad and I watched the Buster documentary um, on Amazon. Peter Bogdanovich did a Buster Keaton documentary that was, was that? pretty good. It was, was good? good. I enjoyed it. Um, it's a tragic man. He's like another one of those, um, like Sammy Davis Jr., where oh. like he started on vaudeville. Um, but unlike Sa- Sammy Davis Jr., he was like a white guy, and he was like paid equally by his parents. So mm. like from the age of six months, like they they did a vaudeville act where they they like literally attached a handle to their six month year old child and threw and their act was like throwing the child, and it was amazing how well this child could take a fall, and that was Buster Keaton. What the- I know. Like, Jesus. they're so lucky that that kid lived. But then you look at him do these amazing pratfalls and all of this stuff, and you go, like, well, it's because since he was, like, since before he could walk, he was literally, fa- like, taking pratfalls. Mm. That's insane. Where, where is that streaming? Amazon Prime. I'm going to check it out. You should. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, that's going to do it for us, ladies and gentlemen. Be on the lookout for our fistful of resurrections. Yes. In honor of Good Friday. Easter. No, in in Easter. There's no resurrection on Good Friday. I'm sorry. In honor of Easter, that's right, yeah, so. which is on a good Sunday. Yeah. It's not a good Sunday. It's a Sunday, Sunday. and it's good. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have a fistful of that. So uh, be thinking about what your fistful of resurrections are so you can hit us up on social media and share and compare. That's going to do it for us. Thank you all for listening. Enjoy the rest of your week. It's good to be back. I missed you, listeners. Yay. And until next time.